Uh, Timmy, it's actually not unusual for patients to spend um, such an extended period of time in hospital. If you're one of the very severe COVID patients who requires ventilation, you're looking at an average of two to four weeks um, on the ventilator itself. And after you've spent that amount of time on a ventilator, patients, once they are, um, you know, once they are able to come off the ventilator, they're considerably weak and they are actually unable to walk and take care of themselves and need an extensive amount of rehabilitation after such a prolonged period of ventilation. And when you stay in hospital for an extended period of time, especially in an ICU setting, you're at very high risk for contracting um, infections in the hospital, which again then prolong your stay. So our very severely ill COVID patients um, are spending an extensive period of time in the hospital. Let's talk about the, the functions of a ventilator. Yes, it does assist the patient to be able to breathe, but is, all, is it also supposed to assist perhaps in getting their lungs stronger, or is that not the case? Uh, that's not the case at all, to me. It's really just supporting the patient while the body itself heals. Um, we give various different types of medications to try and aid that process, but the ventilator is not um, speeding the recovery of the patient at all. It's just supporting them. You know, there are a lot of the different um, modalities of ventilation that we know can actually cause injury to the lung, and we try and ventilate patients in what we call a lung protective um, type of ventilation to avoid that. But the ventilator itself does not speed recovery. It's just supporting the patient while the body recovers from whatever insult it is, and in this case, it's the, the COVID-19. You mentioned, Doctor, that there may be other infections that arise due to extended hospitalization stays. Um, what, what type of infections seem to be most common? We are seeing quite a lot of bacterial infections, and they're the typical bacterial infections we see in ICU patients that are um, in ICU for a very extended, or even in hospital for an extended period of time. You know, being in hospital makes you at risk for picking up hospital and acquired infections. And unfortunately, when you pick up a hospital and acquired infection, those are normally resistant organisms to conventional antibiotics. And then patients require one, two weeks of um, antibiotics that are not, that are more, well, the general public would call them the strong antibiotic, but they're the, the more expensive, um, the more um, unusual antibiotic, which then obviously pushes cost and further complications up. As far as costs are concerned, in public hospitals, uh, what type of antibiotics are they given? Are they given the more cost-effective ones, or does the state say we are going to give you the best, to give you the best chance of survival? We have very strict antibiotic stewardship protocols in state hospitals, or in the state hospital I work at the Tishala Pacheke. So we are not just randomly starting any antibiotic that we would like. We look at the resistance profiles in our units so that we are picking the antibiotic that we know will be best for the patient. We do have access to whatever antibiotic the patient requires and after two to three days when cultures come back on these patients, we then can streamline the, the antibiotic to be the most appropriate antibiotic for that infection. So in state hospitals, we have access to whatever the patient requires, but we are a little bit more cautious by using what is more appropriate um, at the beginning. So, Doctor, before I let you go, if you could highlight for us what are the factors that influence or affect whether or not a patient will have an extended stay or a shorter stay. I mean, we are seeing people, even with comorbidities, being released, um, you know, in shorter periods of time. What are the factors there? So, depending on how severe your COVID is, the more severe patients would be in hospital for longer. Usually, um, the older patients are in hospital for longer, but as you reported, this is a 33-year-old gentleman in Peter Maritzburg. So, it all depends on multiple different things. At the end of the day, it, it looks like your genetics will determine how quickly you get out of hospital, how, deter how active you are rehabilitated in the ICU. A lot of ICUs are very good at mobilizing their patients from very early on in the procedure, getting patients into chairs, a lot of the physios mobilize the patients while they're on ventilators, which obviously speeds up their recovery. Whereas sometimes it's a lot easier just to let patients lie in their beds on the ventilators, but this then prolongs their stay and obviously increases their complications. So it's about being very aggressive about um, A, managing all complications that come up as soon as possible, 
ventilating patients in the most safe um, modes that are possible and mobilizing your patient as quickly as possible and using our allied medical staff, both the physios, the OT, the speech therapists, um, as early as possible so that these patients who are going to have long stays are mobilized quicker. Dr. Erica Shadrach, we'll leave it at that for this afternoon. Thank you so much for your insight. Pleasure.